Hey everyone, and welcome to our first in-depth look at Resto Shamans in Shadowlands. If you've been keeping up with our tier lists, you'll know that Resto Shamans are shaping up to be a middle-of-the-pack healer in terms of their strength. Still though, players loyal to the class will be glad to hear that their toolkit remains as strong and versatile as ever, meaning Resto Shamans will continue to have their unique place in the meta. In this video, we've teamed up with Europe's top Resto Shaman, Lontar, to cover all the basics that you need to get started with your own Resto Shamans the moment that Season 1 of Shadowlands begins, including the best races, talents, covenants, soulbinds, conduits, and legendaries. We'll also be releasing a refresher guide when Season 1 starts that will cover any outdated information in this guide, along with a more advanced look at how to deal damage, perfect your playstyle, and what your best comps are. So be sure to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified the moment the guides are out. To get things started, let's take a look at what's changed from BFA. Last expansion, Resto Shamans had a very odd playstyle which basically saw them sit in Ghost Wolf whenever they were targeted. This was because of the Pack Spirit Azerite trait, which kept Shamans alive without them actually needing to, you know, heal themselves. Moving into Shadowlands, with the loss of Azerite essences and traits, this will no longer be the case. Resto Shamans once again need to be cautious with their positioning, and will also be required to cast in order to top themselves when under heavy pressure. Still though, Resto Shamans continue to have some really strong instant healing through Riptide, Healing Stream, Healing Tide, Earth Shield, Unleash Life, and Ascendance. Plus, their mastery still remains extremely strong, making it easier for them to heal low health targets. Resto Shamans are also shaping up to be quite a strong offensive healer, as they've held onto Grounding Totem, Wind Shear, and Purge, while also gaining a harder hitting Flame Shock and Lava Burst that saw their mana cost reduced, further incentivizing their use. Sadly though, while some other classes have gained new impactful spells, Resto Shaman's toolkit remains much the same as it was in BFA, so although they're not in a worse position, the lack of new meaningful ability stops shamans from reaching higher peaks. This leads us to believe that a small rework to the Resto Shaman's talent tree to make another ability baseline and offer at least one new strong ability that they could pick up for PvP would go a long way. In particular, adding another offensive tool such as Stormlash Totem back in Mop would play into the offensive role that Resto Shamans are looking to fill in Shadowlands. By the way, if you're enjoying the video, a sub to the channel would be phenomenal. Alright, next up we're going to take a look at everything you need to get started with your own Resto Shamans, starting with the best races. If you're playing Alliance, you have two competitive options, Dwarf and Dark Iron Dwarves. Both Stoneform and Fireblood provide significantly more benefit in PvP than any of the other Alliance racials, with Stoneform being the more defensive option as it provides some physical damage reduction, whereas Fireblood increases your intellect, making it the more offensive option. And with spells like Mind Games currently in the game, it would be an obvious mistake to play without the Dwarf Racial as Shaman. Horde players will want to stick with playing as an Orc for the stun reduction from Hardiness, coupled with the extra damage from Blood Fury, this makes Orcs hands down the only viable race for Shamans playing on Horde. To compare the two though, we'd place Dwarves above Orcs in matchups where there are high impact debuffs that you'll want to remove, such as the previously mentioned Mind Games and Orcs in matchups where you have to deal with stuns. Alright, with your race selected, let's go over your talents. Starting in the level 15 row, we see Unleash Life as the best choice. This is not only because it buffs your next heal by 35%, but also because the Unleash Life itself provides a decent amount of healing without the need to cast, something crucial to have when your team is dropping low and you're pressured by interrupts. Next up in the level 25 row, Echo of Elements is the best pick. Previously in BFA, Resto Shamans had to pick up Earth Shield in this row, but with Earth Shield now baseline, you can pick up Echo of Elements to gain an extra charge on some of your most important abilities. This talent is made even stronger with the Swirling Currents Conduit, which we'll get into later. The level 30 row sees two great talents that you'll need to alternate between depending on the matchup. First, we have Spirit Wolf, which is an excellent tool for helping you survive stuns if you're able to get into Ghost Wolf before being stunned. Meanwhile, Earth Grab Totem is a must against some classes for the added control. Given the loss of Pack Spirit, you're more likely to take Earth Grab Totem to most matchups, but if you find yourself struggling to survive swaps onto you, Spirit Wolf may just be what you need if you're able to pre Ghost Wolf stuns. Moving down to the level 35 row, Earth Wall Totem is by far the best option here. It's an incredibly strong talent that can be used to completely counter an enemy team skill attempt. Next, the level 40 row also comes with an easy choice, with Nature's Guardian being the go-to for almost every matchup as it provides you with a safety net whenever you drop low. Although, 
Graceful Spirit can be considered in matchups where you don't expect to ever be swapped as it has excellent synergy with Ancestral Gift, but ultimately playing without Nature's Guardian makes it much easier for you to die in a single swap, so be careful when choosing to do this. In the level 45 row, Flash Flood is the best option and doesn't require any additional gameplay or buttons to press. It simply reduces the cast time of your next heal by 20% whenever you consume Tidal Waves, which helps in quickly topping yourself and others when they drop low. And finally, in the level 50 row, Ascendance is another easy choice to always make. What makes this talent so powerful is not just the fact that it improves your throughput for its duration, but also because it pretty much tops your team as soon as it's used, giving you yet another way to heal people without needing to cast. Alright, with your standard talents out of the way, let's take a look at your best PvP talents. Your go-to build for most matchups will be Grounding Totem, Tidebringer, and Sky Fury Totem. Grounding Totem is easily your strongest PvP talent, a once baseline ability for shamans. It's an integral part of your toolkit for preventing damage, CC, and even interrupts. If timed well, it can even be used to stop instant CC, such as a Paladin's Hodge. Overall, this talent is extremely versatile and is taken to almost every matchup. Tidebringer is then an excellent tool for increasing your throughput and making it easier to keep your team alive with a reduced cast time, especially against spread pressure as it'll jump from your target and heal others too. Finally, we have Sky Fury Totem, which helps casters on your team deal more damage while also assisting you with your own damage output and healing throughput, making it both a great offensive and defensive tool. Another talent that you may want to consider swapping in is the previously mentioned Ancestral Gift, which gives your Spirit Walker's Grace and Aura Mastery effect, allowing you to immediately incoming interrupts for 5 seconds when it's used. You'll generally drop Sky Fury for this when playing melee cleaves against comps with plenty of interrupts to better deal with all the interrupts that'll be used against you. Alright, so you've hit max level and you've got the right set of talents. What's next? Well, if you've been around since Legion, you'll be very familiar with the term Borrowed Power, which is set to continue into Shadowlands. You'll need to start by choosing the best Covenant for your class, which will give you the access to two abilities among a whole host of other perks that we'll cover after this section. Currently, we're recommending the Venthyr as the best Covenant for Resto Shamans. This is less about the Shaman Venthyr ability, Chain Harvest, and more about one of the Soulbind abilities that you get from being a part of the Venthyr, which we'll touch on later. Still though, Chain Harvest is a decent part of both your offensive and defensive toolkit and is on the Shadow School, meaning that you can use it to get some healing out when you're interrupted on nature and you can freely cast it offensively without worrying about being interrupted. You also get the Covenant ability Door of Shadows, which can help a little with mobility. But again, the reason to go Venthyr is less about these active abilities and more about one of the passive Soulbind ones. Alternatively, if you're interested in playing both Resto and Elemental, or you want a different flavor of Covenant, the Necro Lords are also a competitive option. With the Necro Lords, you'll get Primordial Wave, the Shaman Necro Lord ability, which is a great tool for additional single and multi target healing. You also get Fleshcraft, which, when paired with the Soulbind ability Ultimate Form, lets you outplay opponents by immuning incoming CC if it's timed well. And speaking of Soulbind abilities, let's go back to the reason why Venthyr is your best. Covenant. After selecting your Covenant, you'll unlock Soulbinds, which are essentially skill trees that you'll be progressing through as you journey through Shadowlands. You'll then want to go with Nagia to pick up Familiar Predicaments, essentially the sole reason for going Venthyr. This Soulbind ability reduces your lockout duration by 25% when interrupted, making it incredibly powerful for every caster. You also get to pick up Thrill Seeker, which grants you 20% haste for 10 seconds every time it stacks up. While this is a decent perk, it's mostly just an added bonus, and it's familiar predicaments that we really care about. Alright, so you've set Nagia as your soul bind, but you're not done yet. You'll also need to pick up a bunch of conduits, which are split up into three different categories. Endurance, Potency, and Finesse. Now, depending on the Soulbind that you choose and the path that you take through the Soulbind abilities, you'll gain access to different combinations of Conduit types. Our recommended path through Nagia sees you choose from one Finesse and three Potency Conduits. Starting with our Potency Conduits, Swirling Currents, Embrace of Earth, and Lavish Harvest are the three best picks. Swirling Currents is a no-brainer for the added throughput. It also has excellent synergy with Echo of the Elements, as we mentioned in the Talent section earlier. Embrace of Earth is another easy choice for once again just increasing your throughput of your Earth Shield target. And Chain Harvest is yet another way to increase throughput, albeit a more RNG one, as it simply increases the crit chance of Chain Harvest. But given the fact that it jumps to multiple targets, you gain a lot of value out of this conduit. As for your Finesse Conduit, Crippling Hex is looking to be the most consistent, giving you a pseudo-defensive cooldown for your team by reducing the damage of the target that you Hex. 
Alternatively, Totemic Surge also looks decent, but most likely won't see play until we have access to higher ranked conduits for the additional CDR on some of your totems, especially Tremor. Finally, if you wanted to go a different route and needed to pick up an Endurance Conduit, we recommend using Refreshing Waters. This just makes it easier to quickly top yourself whenever you drop low. And as a quick reminder, that leaves our recommended Soulbind build looking like this, with Swirling Currents, Embrace of Earth, Lavish Harvest, and Crippling Hex being our choices. The final step that you'll need to take is to pick up your best Legendary. Luckily for Resto Shamans, this decision is an easy one. Earth and Harmony is looking to be the best pick for Resto Shamans, returning Earth Shield to its former glory as a tool that can keep targets alive when they drop low while you're CC thanks to the 300% increased healing. And being able to add Earth Shield stacks by casting healing waves onto your Earth Shield target is an added bonus that helps a little with mana efficiency. Alright everyone, that concludes our first look at Resto Shamans in Shadowlands. You should now have everything you need to get started in Season 1, and be sure to subscribe and check back for our follow-up video, which will include updates to the information in this guide, along with a more advanced look at how to deal damage, perfect your playstyle, and what your best comps are. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.